Hello, everybody. I'm Helen, and I teach at the Dorothy Benson Senior Services Center. And today we're going to do a four week um, hand building clay session on pre inspired, well, or you can do it inspired by pre Columbian pottery. So I am going to do a quick screen share and we're going to see what this is all about. Okay. All right, so pre-Columbian pottery, basically it's pottery of the Americas. That means North America, uh, Central America, and South America. Um, and it's basically in general pottery between 2000 BC until Columbus arrives. And when Columbus arrives, you know, things change. So let's see what these things look like. Usually, okay, here are the real basic simple ones, the really old ones. And they're basically coil built pottery. Um, some are functional, um, actually most of them are functional. And um, they're pit fire, meaning they are fire not in the kiln, but a hole is dug in the ground and the pots are placed in there. And sometimes with um, some kind of combustible material, sometimes with cow dung, um, sometimes with straw branches and everything. And it's covered up and then it's slowly heated up and fired for like uh, over a day, okay? And that's why you see some of these soot marks, these black marks. The earlier ones are basically simple and lots of figures and lots of animals. And here's two of the ones, this is a bird. And you can see there's a spout where the liquid comes out of the bird's mouth. And a lot of these have handles, okay? And then I guess the liquid can be poured in there too. And this one has a spout on its side, both sides. So maybe it's a ceremonial flask or something. Okay. And then sometimes you'll see it uh, with figures on top sitting there, okay? And then um, on the right, you'll see a highly decorative one. Um, the pigments are basically earthen pigments. So it'll be like ochres that you find when you dig up, uh, dig the dirt in the ground or, or um, rocks and they're finally ground up and they're added to the clay to color these. Um, and these are painted. This one on the right is pretty fancy. And then there's an animal head there. Okay. And here's one, um, probably like a jaguar. And it has an opening on the top and the tail probably functions as a handle. We can't see the tail. But notice the um, highly geometric decorative element of this piece. And we have an owl here and a frog on the right. And the frog one, because it doesn't look like it has a spout where the frog's mouth is, um, I'm not sure if they drink out of here and then the air, you know, you have an air passage here. So maybe that's how that one works. And then you see some that are like dishes like this. So the legs, this guy only has two legs if you think about it. And that looks like a tail, but this one is highly decorated, painted extremely well. And even the head is sculpted very well. So we see this uh, Jaguar again, simple geometric, highly complicated geometric. So pay attention to these uh, designs. Um, a lot of these designs are pretty universal. You'll see them in other uh, cultures and everything. But this one is done with pigments. And this one looks like there might be an animal motif here. I'm not sure. Um, if you look at this one, you'll see a face right here, OK? And then we have um, a simple, simple geometric design, OK? So let's build one that's a simple one, like maybe like this one, OK? And I'll show you how you can make these, all right? So here we go. OK, what I did was um, my clay is a little bit dark because I had to, I'm using recycled clay and you all know that you can recycle clay, right? And when I re-wet my clay and, and wedged it, it was very soft. So what I do is I make like, it looks like kettle pit, I set it up. And this way the clay can dry out a little bit. Okay, I still have to re-wedge it. So I have several of these just sitting here, um, drying out right here, okay? So what I do, um, basically you can make two pinch pots, but to make a large pinch pot is kind of hard because um, 
it'll the weight of the clay will make it collapse. So I use um, these bowls, okay? And I make the pinch pots in the bowls, right? And what I do is I take a knit fabric, and this one happens to be rayon, but it's thin. Um, you could probably take tights, okay, and cut them up. Or I wouldn't recommend the cotton t-shirt. You need something with lycra in it that's super flexible and stretchy. And then what I do is I put the lump of clay in here, a ball of clay in here, and then uh, pretend this is a ball of clay, okay? And then I put the whole thing inside the bowl, okay? And then, and make sure I don't have creases in the fabric as much as possible. And that's why you want something super stretchy, okay? So those, and then I keep pressing and pressing. If you don't know how thick your walls are, you can always take a needle tool, which is where here? Okay, uh, needle tool, needle tool, where are you? Oh, here it is. Okay, you can always take a needle tool to see how thick your wall is, make a round ball of clay, all right? Stick it in there, hold on to that ball of clay, pull it out, and you can see it's that thick. All right, and then you can just press it. Now, I am going to put two of these round uh, half, uh, what is it, pinch pots together to form a ball that's going to trap the um, air inside. And that way I can shape it without it collapsing on me. So I've got one here. Now this guy, even though I did this early this morning, um, he's still not drying out because it's, I guess the atmosphere is too humid. Um, this guy is a little bit drier, okay? If you run your air conditioning all the time in your house, um, you'll get something a little bit drier. He's, he's actually kind of stiffer. And this one, since I made it after this one, even though it's on like 30 minutes later, he's still wet. Okay, so I am going to... Let's see, try to slice this, okay. I'm getting rid of that hard dry dowel edge. Okay, it's pretty thick. And then I need to get rid of the, I'm gonna keep this guy in here because he's too wet. And when I put the other piece on top, he's going to collapse. So just going to keep him in there to support him for right now. Okay, this guy, put that fabric back on him. I'm putting the fabric back on him so that it doesn't um, stick to the bowl. Okay, I'm going to try to cut this evenly. Um, this rim is going to be a slightly smaller than the other rim because it's not sticking up as much from the bowl. So just trying to level it out a little bit and get rid of that dried out rim piece. Okay, once I um, put the two together, I'm not going to be able to get to the inside of the pot. So... Um, I have to make sure my pot is thin enough. This guy's pretty thick, I guess. If it's too thick, you can always carve it out. And let me see if I can find my carving tool here. It's somewhere. Nope, here we go. Okay, so I've got this big gigantic carving tool. Now I have to be careful because um, if I get it too thin, it's gonna collapse on me. Except for this is the top part, so maybe it's not gonna be so bad. Okay, my rim is not even, that's okay. And once I put the two pieces together, I'm going to shape it in more of a oval shape, maybe even an egg shape. Okay, so you want to thin out. 
I'm not going to worry about the center because that eventually is going to get cut open because that's where the spell is going to be. Okay, I'm just getting rid of some of the oops thickness here. Now, if you accidentally punch a hole, just patch it up. Patch it up real good, though. Smush and merge the clay. Okay, that's good enough. All right, now let's check on this one. Um, I'm going to actually take this out because I don't know how thick some of these parts are. Now, this one's still super wet. See, it distorted real bad. He's like really, really wet. And I don't know why he's, oh, I know. This clay was a lot wetter when I formed it in that bowl. So it's a little bit hard to work with. It's a little bit sticky. Now, once we finish this and you want to make those marks, you can take underglaze and um, you, can, you can purchase underglaze online. And that's bas basically colored clay. Um, you can add stains to your underglaze, I mean, to your clay. This is a dark clay body. So if I paint it with underglaze, I'm gonna have to use a lighter color. And this one I'm going to fire it to come six and it's going to turn a, um, let's see. It's going to turn a reddish color. Okay. Okay. If I fire it just to bisque temperature, it's going to be that terracotta color. Okay. And I can paint it, paint this clay with under glazes, you know, like a darker color, and that might be interesting. Um, if I stain it, with um, a dark iron oxide, it's gonna be that color at cone six, okay? If I go to a higher temperature. If I don't stain it, it actually is a reddish, dark reddish color. Basically this clay is um, Lysella from Lysella, Georgia. And it's, it's, it's just the clay that's used to make bricks for buildings. And it has a lot of grog in it. So I'm gonna put this back in here because it's so soft and He's not gonna hold his shape and he's just gonna collapse on me. Okay, so I'll have to keep it, keep the fabric in because I'm not putting any kind of oil barrier or anything. So it won't stick to the, and then plus I can take it out a lot easier. All right, now I am going to score and attach this other piece. And the rim is probably going to be a little bit smaller. Yeah, just a hair. Okay, that's not bad. Now he's he's a little bit stiffer, so that's not going to collapse on me. All right, so to score this, I am going to scratch it up really good. The bottom clay is super, super soft. And I probably, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. So this is one of those multiple needle scoring tools. You can use a regular needle too if you want. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water here. I don't have slips, so I'm just gonna add water. And then I'm gonna score this a lot more deeper because this guy is a lot drier than this part. Yeah, normally you want them the same dryness, but this will work. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water here. Because I don't have slip, I'm adding water and that kind of makes a slip-like effect. Okay. Now I'm gonna carefully attach this to here and make sure there are no air uh, holes because I don't I don't want the air to escape. So I've got a hole right here because this rim isn't even. Now, um, I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm gonna seal it right now. So I'll take this bottom clay piece and I'll see if I can bring it up. And this is a, you really want the bottom piece to be 
dryer, but it just didn't dry on for me for the demo. So we'll have to just do it. So I've got a hole there. I'm actually going to, because it's such a big hole, I'm actually going to add a little wad of clay right there and then press it really good. And then merge the bottom clay to the top. Oh, actually the hole is right here. Okay, I'm going to wrong place. Oh, this is a big gap. Okay. So super big gap here. I'm just going to have to add a lot of clay. Go like that. Okay, once I do that, I kind of want to push down the top. Okay, because I, I want to make sure that seam is really merged. And you'll see that I've got all these holes right here. We'll just add a coil there to fill in those holes. So I'm just, I'm pushing down a lot on this guy, making sure I don't punch a hole at the same time. All right, now we got to fill in that hole. So the air is trapped in there. The, the, um, I can shape this without it collapsing inward. Okay. And your fingernail does make marks, so you might want to clip your fingernails. Okay, seal that up really good. They gently press as much as you can, make sure um, that space is filled up. I'm gonna add a little extra here because it's sinking inward on me. Okay, now I'm gonna take my flex flexible rib and kind of push it up if I can. Let's see, I might not be able to see this very well. Here, that's better. Okay, just press it up. Okay, um, normally at this point, I take this out. Um, I hope it's not gonna collapse. Let's check it, okay? So I'm gonna grab this, kind of stretchy, but and it's gonna distort. Okay. So this top part is a little bit drier, so I'm gonna actually flip this over. And you want some kind of barrier between the clay and your stand so it doesn't stick there. Okay, so now I'm going to, let's see, clean this up as much as I can. Okay, the air is trapped in here, I can feel it. And hopefully I don't have a hole anywhere. Yeah, I like this flexible thing because I can do a curve, okay? If I do something that's not flexible, then I just get like a faceted effect. Okay, right now I'm just trying to seal that seam as much as possible. I'm not going to worry about the shape at this point. Okay, so we kind of have around a big round ball. And um, I kind of want it to be a little bit more oval-ish. That's going, that's, ooh. Okay, this guy's really wet. Okay, so if you're really careful, just a little bit at a time, you can shape it, okay? Don't pop this thing and watch me pop it now. Okay. Well, it's going to be a tall one. Okay. Um, just very gently shape it as much as you can. 
Okay, I can feel a really thin spot there, and that means that's a weak, weak area, so I have to be careful I don't pop this thing. Okay, right now, I'm talking about oval shape, but it's not really looking too good. On this piece, um, I thought I was going to put feet on it. I guess I could. If I want to put feet on it, right now is the time to do it. You know, I can put feet on it. And then when it stiffens up a little bit, I can reverse it. But I do have to support the bottom, like make a nest or some kind of padding so that the feet don't get squished. Let's see. It's a really tall guy, isn't he? Let's see if I can flatten him. Now, if you accidentally pop it, you know, try to patch it patch that hole where it busted open the best you can. Um, I'm actually gonna take this off, it's getting in the way. Just keep playing with it. Now, uh, right now it's really tall this way. Um, that's okay. But if I did want it shorter, I probably punch a pinhole in it, let some of the air escape, and then I can press it down, release some of the air, and just seal that up real quick. Um, let me just play with this a little bit. I kind of like it big like this. And if you're starting to get cracks, you know, just um, either if it's too if it's getting dry, you know, just wet it a little bit. Make sure you seal, push. Gently push and pull, okay? Make sure you don't get any cracks that open up. Just don't do just the surface like that. I mean, push, okay? Push and pull. You really want to squish that clay. Okay, let's work on the oval a little bit more. Okay, this clay is soft, so it keeps sagging on me. So as it slowly dries, I can work on that. Um, I'm trying to decide whether I'm gonna release some of the air or not. Yeah, it's way too wet and it's sagging on me. So um, I'll have to work on the shape, all right? And don't cut this open until you've got all your feet on here and um, all the other attachments. And if, it's, if you can't get to it right away and it's starting to shrink on you, make a little pinhole so that um, the air inside can escape and it won't crack the piece. Okay, I sort of got the oval going right here, okay? Um, I kind of like it tall like that too. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about it because it keeps sagging on me, so I'll let it stiffen up a little bit. Now, in the meantime, we need to make the animal's head and the feet. So I am going to, um, let's see, probably cat-like. And, you know, not jaguar, but, well, maybe jaguar. Maybe, I don't think they had lions. So you don't want to attach like a big chunk of clay, okay? That's way too thick. So you want to hollow. You're going to want to hollow this guy. And then... 
excuse me, and then attach it. So, and then you got to decide. So I'm going to have that little um, spout like thing. I'm going to have it about maybe be taller. Yeah. And then I'm going to have the head. This guy needs to be bigger, but probably here. Okay. So let me, so you just want to make a hollow inside and make it like a little pinch pot. And if your clay is like wet, it's kind of easy to mold this. Um, if it's not wet like this, kind of on the dry, you're going to get a lot of cracks. So you might want to use a softer clay. So maybe this isn't big enough. I'm going to try to make this as thin as possible. Otherwise, there's no point in making it thick. So I'll make it like a cone-ish, yeah, cone-ish. Keep pinching it a little bit at a time. So it's kind of like a cone-ish shape right now. And then let's start doing the, it doesn't have to look like a real animal. It could be abstract. So I'm kind of like getting it started. Right now, it looks like a panda bear. And I can push out with my finger if it sunk in. Push and pull, smooth it out. And let's see, get at least a basic form going here, okay? It might not end up to be a cat, it might be something, I don't know what it is. It doesn't have to be realistic. Okay, I'm gonna have to put ears on this guy. Okay, let's test him out. Okay, probably go here. Like that. Oops, like that. I could attach it right now, but let me work on this some more because it doesn't quite look like a cat. Okay. So right now it looks like this. Um, I could put eyes, eyeballs in there. Okay, so I'll take, I'll make this, the eyeball really, really wet clay. So hopefully it'll stick and not fall out. Okay, so right now I've got the eyeballs in there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, I gotta work on the details. And if you're worried about it not looking right, um, what happens is if you have underglazes and if you paint it, can disguise anything with that. So I kind of, kind of got a cat going on. Not quite, but good enough. Okay. Okay. 
I just gave it pupils, okay? It's kind of scary looking. Um, I think once I put the ears on, it's gonna look all right. So he'll be attached right there. Um, now, I'm, I haven't put the ears on yet, but I'm going to go ahead and trace around this. I don't have it cut evenly, but I'll know where to score, okay? So um, I can't see that very well. Okay, I've got a line there. So I'm going to score this. Once I put the rim on and um, open this up, if I want to, I can reach in and remove that part, but I may just leave it in. If I'm going to leave it in, I do need to make a pinhole uh, on the on on the head part so that air is not trapped in there. Um, I'm not going to make a pinhole on this side because if I put liquid in here, the liquid might go into the head and not and won't be able to come out. Okay, so I scored that. I don't have slip once again, so I'm gonna make mushy clay. Make mud there. And then carefully score this one. Here. So I'm scoring this one carefully. Okay, and like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because the le less perfect, I think it has more character. Okay, right now it looks like some kind of fish or something. Okay, now I'm gonna just kind of wiggle it, make sure there's suction on there. And then we will take the... Okay, We will take this guy. I don't think he's even straight. Okay. And very gently push and pull once again. And um, this guy is the ball itself is kind of thin, so I have to be careful. I don't poke a hole through that. Okay, what you want to avoid is make it look like it's just stuck on there. So you want to kind of have a gradual transition right here. And it's kind of hard to work on it because the, the ball itself is pretty uh, soft right now. And thin. I made it kind of thin, so. But as the ball stiffens up, you can actually work on this some more, but right now the clay is wet and soft on, on the head. So I'm just working on this. Now I may or may not put legs on this. Um, I know I don't have time to do it right now because the ball is way too wet, okay? And if I can't do it until next week, then what I have to do is wrap this guy up real tight so that he doesn't dry out, but still stiffen up enough. And I can show you next week how to do that and all that. Okay, let's go ahead and put um, ears on this thing. What happened there? Okay, so I can smooth that out later, all those marks. And I can also bulge him out a little bit. Okay. All right, he needs ears. All right, to do the ears, I'm going to dent this a little bit. I just kind of dent it right there where the ears go. Get these kind of... Um, Probably 
Oh, I know this guy is trapped. The air is trapped in here. So I can actually cut through here, make a little hole here where I can stick the ears in. Cause it's not gonna, making a hole here is not gonna affect the air that's in here. And then what I'll do is um, make the ears. I'm just kind of, don't make it too thin, okay? Cause it'll just break right off. So I'm making an ear, okay? And then I've got this part that I hopefully can get inside that hole. And that'll be more secure. So make a little cone shape. Press the ear part a little bit, okay? Try it out, oh, that looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna smooth it out a bit, wet it. Be gentle with this because you'll ruin the shape if you press too hard. Probably a good idea to see if these match kind of close. One's a little bit bigger, okay. And then, then I'm just gonna add a little bit of water in there and see if I can stick this in here. The hole's probably too small, yeah. So we'll make the hole a little bit bigger. You don't wanna get it too big because then it's hard to make it small again. Okay? okay, I'm gonna stick this guy in here. He's still a little bit too big. Push it a little bit. Oh, it looks like a panda bear. So that's a cat. Come here. Let me see your head. Okay. All right. So they kind of face outward. I have to look at my cat's ears to make sure they look kind of like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of water here. Okay. That hole needs to be much, much bigger. Okay, so the ears point a little bit that way. Now, if you can't get your finger in there, just use a tool, any kind of tool to kind of like, um, I'll just use the end of a brush. Okay, I don't know what kind of animal this is, but that's okay. Okay, so I've got him. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. Okay, that's probably better. Okay, it looks like a bear right now. Um, maybe the ears need to be a little bit pointier. And it needs to go in that way. Here we go. Now it looks like a bat. Let me try to blend this into his head. Well, once I paint under glazes on it, or you know, you could probably just even carve it. Nobody says you have to paint it, but the, the Columbia ones look like they're painted. Okay, these don't look like cat eyes. Let me see if I can shape them more like cat eyes. Oh, my eye pupil is loose. Just make them more like almond shape. Okay, I can work on this a little bit more when it's a drier. I can actually carve the eyes a little bit more. Okay, so I've got air trapped in here, so I'm going to have to make a little pinhole under here where it's not noticeable, so that um, as this clay shrinks, it doesn't you know, crack, it'll crack because the clay will shrink and the air pressure will push on the clay. Okay, might be a little bit dark. Let's see if this will help. Nope, doesn't quite help, does it? 
Okay, so far, um, this guy's face is too fat. It needs to be more angular. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So it looks like we're going to spend a lot of time on the head part. This does not look anything like a cat, and I don't know why. Probably the eyes. Okay, I'll work on that some more later. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead because when I'm trying to, I'm trying to shape it right here, and the air pressure is not letting me push it in more. So I'm going to go ahead and make a tiny little pinhole. Let some of the air escape. I could make the pinhole in his mouth. Here we go. So I just made it in his mouth. And see if I can. Okay, be careful. Once you push in, you can't push it out anymore. And probably the less realistic this guy is, the better it's going to look. So I'll work on him some more. He's still a little bit too wet for me to do anything. But you need to cover this up so it doesn't dry out on you. I don't have the ears right. Okay, that's better. <coughs> we'll just give him those kind of ears. Okay, so that's as far as got on that one, okay? Um, I do need to give it some kind of a tail. And because this one's not going to have the handle, I could have a handle, but um, he's not going to have a handle. And right now, you know, I still have to shape this. This is a very fat, maybe it should have been a bear, it's just a bear that ate a lot of salmon. Um, I think I'm going to release some of the air inside. I think I'm gonna have to do that. Okay, let's see if I can do this without it collapsing. All right, so I've got a tiny pinhole on top. That's gonna release the air. Once I push this in, I can't I can't inflate it again unless I blow in there somehow. Okay, I may have to get a straw and blow in there, but okay, so I can keep shaping this, keep shaping this. Um oh, that's a very fat one. Maybe the head should have been bigger. I may have to turn this into bear. the ball the head is way too small but that's okay we'll see what happens
So I'm probably gonna put a small tail here. Maybe it'll stick out. Right now, I, I just don't like the proportion right now. I could cut the head off and redo it. The head's too small, I think. Okay, I'm gonna cut the head off, all right? And then I'm gonna redo it um, because I think the proportion is wrong. So you'll see a new head on it next week. It's the exact same process. Don't be afraid to, you know, redo stuff, okay? Okay, so that's what it looked like. The ears were on there. I could say this and make another pop, but that's okay. We can always make another one. Um, I got to take this off. I seal that little hole. I still have to work on the shape. Okay, so when you come, when we come back next week, you'll see um, a new head on this and probably a tail. And then we'll work on putting feet on it and then uh, the spout in the rim, okay? So until next time, so, so don't be afraid to redo something. Um, it was just way too big. I mean, the body was way too big for the head, I think. And I still need to fix this. Okay. So um, we will see you next time. I'll work on the, a, a new head. And then um, the tail is easy. You just, you know, make a tail or a cone, carve out the inside, make it hollow and stick it on. And then um, we will work on putting the feet on unless uh, it's so dry. I have to keep this wrapped up so it doesn't dry out in order to put the feet and the rim on, okay? All right, so we will see you next week.